Hello and welcome back. Um, getting to the end of the year here. Uh, in fact, this video may or may not go up before the start of the new year, 2024. So looking forward, I wanna talk about some goals and some things that we're gonna be changing on the car. But for today, we have something kind of cool. So all these other videos, we've been uh, promoting the good old ETS products. But today we have a box of stuff from do 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 Perrin. Ooh, PRE, a special box straight from Perrin. What could be in this little tiny box? Well, um, let's get to the side over here. Inlet, Perrin Turbo Inlet. So it'll be fun to test this guy. Um, uh oh, there is a part on this that you're not allowed to see. We have a prototype part for the car. I'm not supposed to talk about the prototype part for the car, so I just wanna tell you that there will be a prototype part that we're going to install on this car and test. And in this video, I'm not gonna tell you at all what that prototype part is. Just know that it's on there. The part is in my hand. Yeah, it's that small. But what is it? What could be in my hand that's a prototype part that's going on the car? Well, as soon as Perrin tells us that we can tell you, we will. But until then, we're just gonna test it. On to the other parts in the box. We have a Perrin Turbo Inlet. Um, this will be fun. I've, I've been excited about this part for a while. It's just a soft inlet. Um, they're just silicone, but they replace the plastic inlet. Supposedly, they help fix a boost leak that is in the factory from part of the way that the factory bypass and PCV system works. So this should allow us to run less, or I guess more wastegate position, let the wastegate stay a little bit more open um, and make the same boost. So it'll be fun to test this and see what it does compared to the stock inlet and see if it actually picks up power because as we've been seeing on this car, for the most part, things don't really pick up power. They just, you know, add to, ooh, that's fun, look at that. That's nice. Yeah, that's, that's some good quality stuff. Sorry my unboxing videos aren't as good as some people's unboxing videos, but, but hey, we're in a shop here. We're in a working shop. We're not in a nice, you know, factory facility or whatever, so there you go. Got some plastic, plastic bits. That's a fun custom tee. Uh, Non-reinforced vacuum line. Hopefully it's not for something critical, but either way, it looks pretty good. Oh, and of course, an extra zip tie. There's zip ties in the bag, but there's an extra zip tie. All right, let's get these parts on the car. I'm gonna have to pull the car off the dyno to do this because unfortunately, turbo inlets are way down in the hole. Actually, I'm gonna strap the car down and do a base pull. I just remembered I have made a couple of changes to the tune since the last time it was on the dyno, so I wanna get a baseline anyway um, before we put the parts on so we can get a true apples to apples comparison, which is what I have promised you guys I will continue to do. So this little piece right here is what we're going to be replacing with the parent part. Basically, it's going to replace the coupler to the ETS intake as well as this little cast piece from Subaru.
So here's our turbo, looking good. This is the bypass valve. Sorry, this is the bypass valve. This is the wastegate, uh, the electronic wastegate. This is the breather line. Good stuff. What? All right, so this is one of the interesting things that the Perrin Inlet supposedly fixes. This little hole right here actually comes from the charge side and goes into the inlet here. So right there. Why? We don't know. But it's essentially a factory boost leak. So Perrin in their kit includes a little plug that we're gonna put the o-ring on and set in there and they threaded it which is fun so you can put a bolt in to pull it out if you need to take it out in the future thinking ahead guys i like to see that but then their little inlet plate which is what we're gonna clamp the silicone and let you can see it has an ear that then holds that plug in place quite interesting So you can see we've got our PCV connector on there and our EVAP way up there. Everything fits and it does fit with the ETS intake. So that's a good sign for anybody that had that question. Um, it's looking pretty good. Gonna go ahead and finish reading through the instructions. There's a couple more little lines and things that it wants us to replace. So we're gonna do that. So on their instructions, they say having a bent awl will help you put the inlet on. We like to call them hookers. All right, looks like the next step is some EVAP stuff that is on the top of the motor. Um, I just wanted to talk about this real quick. This looks pretty good. If anything, I might consider replacing this whole hose assembly from there to there. Um, it just looks kind of funky hanging out and it, you know, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie it to the inlet, even though it's kind of not the prettiest, but at least that'll keep it away from the header. Um, but other than this little piece, which is just a solution to a problem, I guess, um, looks pretty good and fits really, really well. So this brake booster hose, the instructions say on the right side of the engine, but it's actually this guy right over here. Um, I, th I guess if it's the right side if you're in that, right hand drive, sure. Right side, left side, stage right, stage left. Anyway, it's this hose right here. Hard to see, but, but uh, this guy right here. Okay, there we go. Everything's looking good, tidy, neat. Turbo inlet is installed. Let's get it back to the dyno, see what it does, and then it's time for prototype parts. Back on the dyno, I forgot to show you the baseline from earlier. 320 horse and 370 torque, right where we like to see it. And this is just 92 octane, nothing fancy in the tank, no octanium or anything else. So we're back on the dyno, and we're going to see what it does with the inlet. No idea. All right, here is our 
results before 320.84, after 325.23, peak for peak. Uh, torque 370 before, 373.02, peak for peak. No tune changes were made on the car. This is just letting the factory boost control system do its work. You can see torque is almost identical. So before was the red, right now at the parent inlet is the blue. But where we're gonna see things get a little interesting here is up top, right there at about 6,200 RPMs, you can see that we're making, that's 16 horsepower, 324 over the 308 from before. 16 horsepower. So yeah, everything passed about 5,500, pretty significant gains with this parent inlet. And that's what I was hoping for. Uh, I think that little boost leak really, uh, is really hurting the car. I'd have to go back and look at the wastegate positions to see how much less wastegate target we're, we're needing up here. I guess how much further open the wastegate target gets to be to make the boost up top. But yeah, look at that pretty significant. So what that tells us is, this is a good part, Perrin, thanks a lot. Um, we really enjoy seeing parts that, that, that work on cars and don't just solve an aesthetic issue, but actually make, I mean, it's gains everywhere. Aside from that little, it was a little bit of a bump there. I don't know why it's a bump there, but um, even above that, 319 versus 305 and so on. So definitely, I'd really say I mean, everywhere it picked up power, but marginal up until about, I guess, 4,600 RPMs, it really started to take off. Yeah, looking good. Now it's time for prototype parts. <laughs> prototype test part, see Jeff for instructions. Not allowed to show you what this is. In fact, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for even doing this much, but it goes on the car. I don't actually know if it's for making power. I don't know what this part's for. I really have no clue. And I'm excited to test it either way and give Jeff feedback on how it worked, how it installed, how it fit, and the like. And then uh, see if it makes any difference power-wise, which I doubt. And then see if it makes any difference drivability-wise, which I, I'm guessing it's gonna. Magic, the bag is empty, the parts are on the car. Now let's see if it did anything. Just letting the car warm up, um, I promised I wouldn't tell what this prototype parent part is, um, just that I would test it, install it, document my install, which I did, um, and uh, just test it on the car, both drivability-wise and on the dyno. So, um, I'm not expecting any power here, but you never know. Um, even if it made a power, it would probably be so negligible. Uh, but this should help with the longevity and reliability of these engines. And that's the primary goal of this piece. So it's not a piece that's going to make power, but hopefully it will make these things um, last longer. And that's super important. Um, so yeah, just know that there are parts coming from Perrin to make your car last longer, and we're helping them test them. Tune review, here we go. Prototype parts. Testing. color me shocked green line kind of hard to see I can't uh, can't show you the the notes I put up here because if I do you'll know what it was this is the prototype prototype part let me clear off the stock baseline obviously we're making more power in stock baseline so prototype versus just the inlet without the prototype. Um, this was just because I started the pull sooner. These cars spool so fast, if I start the pull like 100 RPM sooner, you'd see this huge spool up increase. But torque, look, torque. 
Picked up Torque, the green again. Picked up a bunch of mid-range right there. Picked up a little bit up top and then up here, I think that's just negligible. Probably the boost control system trying to pull back a little bit because I haven't retuned for these parts and really dialed in the boost control um, wastegate positions. But holy cow, I mean, it's this part I did not expect. I, I had no expectation that this part was going to pick up power. Um, same peak for peak, I guess. Um, pretty darn close to identical torque, 373 to 372.93, so 0.1 foot-pounds of torque different. Horsepower, peak for peak, <laughs> 0.03 horsepower different, uh, but a different RPM, you can see. So we peaked much sooner with this prototype part and then, yeah, dropped off. I bet if I retuned for this part, you know, I could do a custom tune for every single one of these parts, but kind of the point is that they need to fall into the blanket of our um, shelf maps. So this does work on our stage two shelf map, both of these parts. Um, I'm pretty sure it'd work on our stage one shelf map as well. So uh, if you have a stage one car or a stage two car, you should be able to put the parent inlet in. And then once this prototype part becomes available, you should be able to put that in as well. Um, but man, yeah, I'm super happy with these numbers. I uh, got out of the car today. It's looking, looking tidy, looking, I mean, it looks exactly the same as it did when it came in, but it's making a little bit more top end power and a little bit more mid range power. So yeah, definitely here. Let me, let me pull up, let me, let me, let me fix this here. So red, red to green, picked up power, picked up torque just everywhere looking a little bit better. Good stuff.